وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على مبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إخوتي وأخواتي في الله my brothers and sisters in Islam may Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless and preserve you all <coughs> So we left. We last left with the uh, muqaddimah uh, of Imam Ibn Abi Zaid Al Qayrawani, rahimahullah Taala, where he said, "Min dalik al iman bil qalb wa nutqi bil lisan bi an Allah ilah wahid na ilaha ghairuhu wa la shabiha lahu." Right, and from those things which is uh, incumbent or obligatory upon the Muslim to uh, profess, uh, believe in his heart and profess on his tongue is that Allah SWT alone is the only deity worthy of worship in truth and that there is no deity worthy of worship except him uh, and there is no shabiha lahu there is no, there is none that are, that uh, uh, can be likened unto him that resemble him and there is none like unto him Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we discussed that in some measure of detail and we talked about what the position of Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah is regarding uh, what we believe about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his names and his attributes extremely briefly. We didn't go into too much detail and uh, we will be sharing more detail regarding that and hopefully uh, some principles, basic principles of Ahlul Sunnah regarding uh, different aspects of Tawheed. And I hope to I hope I hope that uh, all of you with Nitaala will write these down with Nitaala and have them with you uh, as reference points. So anytime I I mention a principle, uh, that uh, be sure to write them down uh, as they are important with Nitaala. So we continue. قال الإمام ابن أبي زيد القيرواني رحمه الله تعالى في مقدمته. قال رحمه الله ولا نظير له ولا ولد له ولا والد له ولا صاحبة له ولا شريك له And then he goes on to say and there's no child that Allah has right there's no child for him nor parent nor companion or wife uh, like no partner companion صاحبة literally means wife here وَلَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ And there's no associate or partner with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after negating any like, likeness of, of the creation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he goes on to say, وَلَا وَلَدَ لَهُ And he has no offspring. He has no son, no daughter, no uh, offspring that he has begotten. And this is, the Qur'an is emphatically and unequivocally clear about this. Right? لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ Allah Jalla wa'ala, he says in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Ikhlas, لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ That Allah uh, was not born, وَلَمْ يُولَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ He does not beget, nor was he begotten. He does not give birth, right? Nor was he birthed. Ta'ala Allah. And Allah is far removed from that. And there's many verses in the Quran that indicate this. This is the easiest to remember, of course. It's in Surah Al-Ikhlas that all of our brothers and sisters in Islam know. Bi'idhna Allahi Ta'ala. Uh, so this, this point is uh, extremely clear in Islamic theology that we do not believe Allah SWT has uh, any children. Nor is he, uh, does he have any parents, whether that's a mother or a father. Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, lam yulad wa lam yulad. He does not beget, nor was he himself begotten. Subhanahu wa Taala. And this is a very uh, specific, uh, you know, word choice by Allah Jalla wa Ala, and it's refuting quite specifically the belief that crept into the belief of the Christians that Isa alayhi salatu was salam 
that Isa alayhi salatu wassalam was a begotten or a, a literal son of God. And um, of course, this is a highly contentious point even within Christian uh, uh, scholarship uh, because the word that's used in the Bible to, to indicate uh, that Jesus was the quote-unquote Son of God or the only begotten Son of God, uh, it is used for many different uh, uh, prophetic uh, and biblical fig figures in, in the Bible. So it's not that it's not that um, Jesus himself, uh, Islam, was referred to as the Son of God in the Bible. Uh, it was many others. So, so I've heard some Christians say, "Okay, that's fine." However, um, you know, they refer to the incident uh, at the River of Jordan, where I believe it was Jesus was being. Uh, baptized or his or or John was washing his feet and uh, the clouds split and a, a voice called on called down from the heavens saying you are my begotten son or my only begotten son and uh, in, of course uh, we don't uh, necessarily believe that however if you were to accept that for the sake of argument that that happened, then in the Bible itself, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or as they claim, God uh, has said that about other than Jesus as well, that you are my begotten son. So um, if you understood it, if you're going to understand it literally for Isa alayhi salam, then what is, what, what is the differentiating factor between Jesus and all those other prophets and men who were told that supposedly by God in the Bible. You can't just give a special status to Jesus and say, oh, but this but Jesus is special. Why? The same word is used, the same language is used. If you are able to read Greek, and then the same word is used, if you're able to use read Latin, and the same word is used. And in the Quran, Allah Jalla wa Ala, He refutes this idea uh, very, very clearly, right? It's it's not it's un, unambiguous completely. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He is not born. He is not begotten. Nor does he beget or give birth. So all the different uh, uh, all the different uh, versions or understandings or different uh, renditions of different religions, not just Christianity. Uh, the different religions had of the relationship between holy men uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the creator of God. Uh, all of that is refuted because we see the, the, the spectrum of belief just not, not within, within Christianity as well and then without, and then outside of Christianity as well, in other ancient religions, right? Whether it's whether it was uh, Pharaohic religions, right? the Egyptians of the Pharaoh, the religion of the Pharaohs, or the religion, different pagan religions of um, uh, in Norse mythology, or in you know you know in uh, in uh, Greek mythology and uh, Roman mythology and all these different religions that existed Hindu the, in Hindu uh, theology, uh, you know, mythology and all these different religions that uh, uh, go back thousands and thousands of years they have different renditions right God is giving birth is being born is incarnating into flesh uh, and having wives and sons and daughters all over the place according to these different um, pagan religions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He shuts the door to all of it. He shuts the door to all of it. And He says, لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ he, he, he is not born, nor does He give birth, period. So that means He, has not, he Himself is not a mother, He's not a father, he's not a, he's not a daughter, He's not a son, 
It's not a husband or a wife. These are all attributes that befit only the creation and not the creator. The creator himself has 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 no part in that. He has no need in that whatsoever. Whatsoever. And there's a really interesting verse in Surah Zukhruf. A very interesting verse in Surah Zukhruf where Allah SWT says in verse number 81, He says, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ لِلرَّحْمَانِ وَلَدْ فَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْعَابِدِينَ Allah SWT says in the Quran, Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, لو, uh, إِنْ كَانَ لِلرَّحْمَانِ وَلَدْ فَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْعَابِدِينَ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, If the Most Merciful had a son, then I would be the first of his worshippers. That's how it's translated in the Sahih International Translation. So when you look in the tafsir of Ibn Kathir, now so this is saying, so, so here's Allah is telling the Prophet as an emphasis, okay, as an emphasis to negate that Allah has, has a son or any any begotted child or anything like this. To, to negate this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing the Prophet to, uh, or is telling the Prophet to say this, and by doing so, he's emphasizing this point, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have a son. And then say, O Muhammad alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَوْ إِنْ كَانَ لِلرَّحْمَانِ وَلَدٌ فَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْعَابِدِينَ فَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْعَابِدِينَ And then Allah says in the verse right after that, سُبْحَانَ رَبِّ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبِّ الْعَرْشِ عَمَّا يصفون. Right. Uh, exalted is the Lord of the heavens and the earth, Lord of the throne above what they describe. Right? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He frees Himself from that quite equivocally, quite uh, clearly. But I want to focus on this beginning part of this ayah here in Surah Zukhruf, which is chapter number forty-eight, verse number eighty-one. Qul ya Muhammad, in Say, O Muhammad, if the most merciful, Ar-Rahman, had a son, فَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْعَابِدِينَ Then I would be the first uh, of his worshippers. And so Imam Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions in his tafsir, أي, meaning, لَوْ فُرِضَ هَذَا لَعَبَدْتُهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ لِأَنِّي عَبْدٌ مِنْ عَبِيدِهِ He said, if it was the case that, that, that God had a son, that Allah SWT had a son, right, or, or an offspring, لَعَبَدْتُهُ Then I would have worshipped him عَلَى ذَلِكَ Because he is this, because, because this would be the, the, the child of God. لِأَنِّي عَبْدٌ مِنْ عَبِيدِهِ Because I am a slave from the slaves of Allah SWT. Right? And then he says, مُطْبِعٌ لِجَمِيعِ مَا يَأْمُرُنِي بِهِ and, uh, and, and my I am, meaning the Prophet uh, a follower of all that which Allah SWT orders me to do. لَيْسَ عِنْدِي إِسْتِكْبَارٌ وَلَا إِبَاءٌ عَنْ عِبَادَتِهِ And I have no, I, 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 and, I, and I do not pridefully reject uh, or 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 um, refuse uh, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever form he wants me to worship him. So if he told me to worship him by worshiping his son, I would have done it. فَلَوْ كَانَ هَذَا And so if this was possible, if this was the case that Allah had a son or had an offspring, then this this would, this would be my position. وَلَكِنْ هَذَا مُمْتَنِعٌ فِي حَقِّهِ تَعَالَى But this is... Uh, Incomprehensible and not allowed regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So now, uh, this is obviously the understanding. And this, my brothers and sisters, this is why reading the, the, the tafasir of our salaf is so important. This is why reading the books of our salaf, our pious, pious predecessors, is so important. And reading the tafasir, there are ma'athur. The tafasir, there are ma'athura. Ma'athura meaning that have the chains of narration with them in their explanation. Okay? The, 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 the tafasir, the explanations of the Quran that rely 
upon the narrations from the Prophet وسلم, the Sahaba and their students and their students' students. It's so important. Because I, while reading and preparing for this class, I learned something and I'm going to share that with you. And I, I'm not going to pretend like I knew this before. Okay? I learned this as I was preparing for this class. Okay? Uh, Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahu ta'ala, he, he mentions, I just, this ayah popped into my mind and that's why I looked it up for this class and I, I learned something today. Um, Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahu ta'ala, he goes on to mention in the tafsir of this ayah, he says, وَقَالَ بَعْضُ الْمُفَسِّرِينَ فِي قَوْلِهِ فَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْعَابِدِينَ some of the scholars of exegesis, of tafsir, of the explanation of the Qur'an, they said regarding uh, the, uh, the part of the ayah where Allah says, فَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْعَابِدِينَ then, then I would be uh, the first of his worshippers. أَيْ الْآنِفِينَ الْآنِفِينَ Meaning those who uh, neglect or reject, not neglect, sorry, but those who reject. So I thought, what do you mean? I, I was I, I didn't understand that point, but this was the position of Sufyan al Thawri uh, and Imam al Bukhari rahimahullah taala. He mentions in his book of Tafsir, ويقال أول العابدين الجاهدين من عبيدة يعبد. Right? Imam al Bukhari mentions about this verse where Allah says, "The first of his worshippers, عابدين." It means here jahideen, meaning those who reject and disbelieve in something. From the word abida ya'bud. So I'm thinking to myself, doesn't abida or abdun mean slave? To worship? Where does juhud come from? Where does jahidi? Where does juhud come from? Juhud to reject something, to refuse uh, something, not accept something. So I was like, hmm. And, he, and so he says, look, in uh, Imam Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, rahimullah, right? Whose tafsir I have there in almost 37 volumes, okay? Originally, Imam Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, rahimullah ta'ala, Abu, I think his name is Abu Ja'far al-Tabari, rahimullah. He wrote, he, he set out to write his uh, tafsir in 300 volumes. My brothers and sisters, 300 volumes. Okay? And when I say 300 volumes, I mean 300 volumes as we understand it today to be to mean something like a volume would be approximately something like this, right? Let's say three, 400 pages. This one is about 450-ish or 400 pages, right? In that time, they didn't write, they didn't write books like this. Imam Ibn Jarir Tabari lived in the 3rd century. Or in the 300s, okay? They didn't have books like this with a ghilaf, you know, with a book cover that you open and, you know, they wrote scrolls. So one of my shiuch, I think it was Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Khalid al-Radadi, hafidhahullah ta'ala, or is it Sheikh Abdul, Abdul Bari al-Ansari, hafidhahullah ta'ala, they mentioned in a class once and they were teaching us about reading makhtutat, reading trans, uh, manuscripts, ancient old manuscripts, he said that a mujallad today, right, like one scroll today would be two volumes. Okay. So if you said I would write 300 mujallad, mujallad meaning scrolls, you could multiply that by two. If one scroll was two of these. Vast. He was a, an amazing scholar of, of tafsir and, and, a, a, and a muhaddith of the highest degree. Okay. As a matter of fact, Imam Ibn Kathir's ex, uh, tafsir is an abridgment. It's a Imam Al Tabari Ibn Jarir the 300 or writing the 300 volume tafsir. He abridged that tafsir into the, uh, depending on the print you have, 36, 35, 37, or 40 volumes today. Okay. So that's not even his extensive tafsir. That's Ibn Jarir Al Tabari's abridgment of his original uh, his original tafsir that he intended to write so uh, you know when Ibn Jarir is, is mentioned 
he has authority in tafsir. Okay, it's, it's not just some uh, run of the mill mufassir, right? If those even exist, uh, which they didn't, of course. Um, so Imam, it's mentioned here by Imam Ibn Kathir. وذكر ابن جري لهذا القول من الشواهد right and so Imam Ibn Jarir mentions regarding this position that أول العابدين I'd be the the first to worship uh, uh, the, his worshippers the word here عابدين or that comes from عبادة or عبيدة it doesn't mean worship it means to reject to reject and to disbelieve in, right? He brings proof for this uh, in a hadith, ma rawahu, an Yunus ibn Abdul A'la, and he mentions his isnad, all the way to uh, Ba'jah ibn Zayd al-Juhani, anna imra'ata, uh, anna imra'an minhum, dakhalat ala zawjiha, wa huwa rajulun minhum, aydan, فَوَلَدَتْ لَهُ فِي سِتَّةِ أَشْهُرٍ Right? Um, so, Ba'ja ibn Yazid, sorry, Ba'ja ibn Yazid al-Juhani mentioned that a, a woman uh, from amongst them uh, entered upon her, uh, her husband. And he was someone from amongst them as well. And then she gave birth to a baby after six months. So, this, so a woman got married to a man and then she gave birth to a child after six months, right? So, of course, he had some uh, doubt. So he says, فَذَكَرَ ذَلِكَ زَوْجُهَا لِعُثْمَانِ بِنْ عَفَانِ So this man went to Uthman ibn Affan, رضي الله تعالى عنه, and mentioned this to him, right? فَأَمَرَ بِهَا أَنْ تُرْجَمْ So then Uthman ibn Affan uh, ordered for this woman to be stoned. فَدَخَلَ عَلِيهِ عَلِي بْنُ أَبِي طَالِبْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ And so Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله تعالى عنه, the cousin of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم and his son-in-law and the fourth khalifa of the Muslimun, he entered upon Uthman رضي الله عنه and he said, فَقَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَقُولُ فِي كِتَابِهِ Allah SWT says in his book, وَحَمْلُهُ وَفِصَالُهُ ثَلَاثُونَ شَهْرًا Right? That the he he said that the caring of the baby and to uh, you know uh, the caring of the baby and the delivering of the baby and what all of that is thalathuna shahra is uh, thirty months thirty months okay. So, uh, uh, وقال في صاله في عامين, right? And then he says, وفي صاله عامين, right? In another part of the Quran, that the process of of birth, bir- birthing a child and rearing a child is the whole thing takes two years. قال فوالله ما عبد عثمان رضي الله عنه أن بعث إليها ترد قال يونس قال ابن وهب عبد استنكف right so after علي رضي الله تعالى عنه after علي رضي الله تعالى عنه uh, he uh, mentioned these ayat to عثمان بن عفان Right, showing him that it's not just black and white. A woman gives birth in at the, uh, at uh, after six months, right? There, there's you know there's there's a it's a gray area. You shouldn't you shouldn't just assume that there was foul play. Okay. So uh, he he brought this ayah to explain to him that there's a gray area. Six months, it's possible for a woman to get pregnant and give birth within six months. It's possible, okay? And we know that now today due to also, you know, obviously uh, te- technology and science and, you know, if a, uh, you know a, a fetus if it's born or a baby if it's born 
after six months, it's premature for sure, okay? Uh, but it can survive, and it's possible. You know, I have a friend, and he's a he's a big, tough dude. And mashallah, he was born uh, uh, three months premature. You wouldn't know if you looking at the brother, mashallah, he's qawi, mashallah, he's a strong brother. So it's possible. So after he did all of this, and Uthman anhu was, you know, convinced and his heart was settled, the narrator says, Qala, فَوَاللَّهِ By Allah, مَا عَبِدَ Uthman. Uthman did not abida this action of abida. Okay? Right? So then, uh, the 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 narrator of this hadith, right? The narrator of this hadith, uh, meaning the one who Imam Ibn Jarir narrating from Yunus Ibn Abdul A'la, Yunus said, "Qala Ibn Wahab who was from the scholars uh, uh, of the Atba Tabi'in." He says the word "abada." Means here istankaf. Abada here means istankaf because it says here Uthman did not abada and baatha ilayha, right? Uh, to uh, to rad, right? He did not. Uh, he did not reject or resent or, uh, you know, uh, disqualify. Okay, what Ali radiallahu anhu said to him, right? And and he did not resent or reject or uh, uh, um, not accept what Ali Radiana said to him and to send and then he sent somebody to um, uh, take you know he took he took back his fatwa on this on this lady and so she wasn't stoned, right? To, to, to return her back to her husband. Okay? So, uh, this word here that's used in the Arabic, in this hadith, okay? Right? This, this word used to uh, express uh, that Uthman did not uh, re- uh, uh, فَوَاللَّهِ مَا عَبَدَ عُثْمَانُ رَضِيَ عَنْهُ أَنْ بَعَثَ إِلَيْهَا تُرُدْ Right? This word here, abada, doesn't mean that Uthman was making ibadah of anything. So, what is the meaning of the word abada here? It means to 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 uh, reject, resent, disqualify, disbelieve in. Right? Uthman didn't do that. Right? Right? And as soon as as soon as he heard what Ali said, he accepted it. And as soon as he accepted it, he sent somebody to go and release that woman back to her. Husband, and that's why Ibn Wahab here, uh, Rahimullah Taala, said the word Abada means istankafa, istankaf, which means to uh, uh, not be resentful and and dis- disqualifying or uh, dismissive of something, right? And then Imam Ibn Kathir goes on to say, وقال الشاعر متى ما يشاء ذو الود يصرم خليله وَيَعْبُدُ عَلَيْهِ لَا مِحَالَةَ ظَالِمًا So he mentions a line of poetry where this word abada, right? This word uh, abada is used in the same way, right? It's used in the same way, right? And then he goes on to say وَهَذَا الْقَوْلُ فِيهِ نَظَرْ لِأَنَّهُ كَيْفَ يَلْتَزِمُ مَعَ الشَّرْطِ فَيَكُونُ in Kanahada, and he goes on to explain something else. But he says that even though this is the case, he said, this is a position that held by uh, held by Mujahid, uh, who is the student of um, student of Ibn Abbas. It was uh, held by Imam Sufyan al Thawri, who was the student of many of the Sahaba. Uh, it was it was a position that. Uh, if not held by Imam Bukhari, then it was a position that Imam Bukhari ta'ala, mentions at least uh, uh, alluding to his validity. So what Ibn Kathir says here, Rahimullah, that 
even though it was a position held by many of the ulama, the initial meaning that we take from Abidin, inshallah, that's what's more correct. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was teaching and telling the Muslims by 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 making the Prophet وسلم, say to mankind that if God had a son, if God had a child, I would have worshipped him. I would have been the first ones to worship him. Because I'm not I'm not arrogant. I, I, I'm not uh, uh, I'm not rejecting of the commandments of Allah. Right? I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala however he, he, he wants me to worship him. And if he had if he had chosen a son or chosen an offspring or chosen somebody to be his son or daughter or whatever it may be, and told me to worship that thing, I would have done it. Period. But but Allah negates them for this for himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees himself from this. And that's uh, viciously obvious uh, in the Quran in like I said Surah Al-Ikhlas or the ayah that comes right after this ayah in uh, ayah number 82 in Surah Zukhruf right after Allah says قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ لِلْرَحْمَانِ وَلَدٌ فَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْعَابِدِينَ say O Muhammad if the most merciful had a, had a, had a son or a daughter then I would be uh, the first uh, of his or her worshippers the next ayah Allah says Subhana Rabbi Samawati Wal Ardi Rabbi Al Arshi Amma Yasifun. Right? Exalted is the Lord of the heavens and the earth, Lord of the throne, above what they describe, above what they attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from having a son or a daughter or any sort of offspring. Right? Lam Yalid wa lam you led. The Quran and the Sunnah. And the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, extremely, extremely clear about this point. And it cannot be emphasized uh, enough. Okay? So, um, uh, I just wanted to mention this point because I've I've seen this ayah come up. And so the Zukhruf, it's a beautiful ayah. It's an amazing ayah. I, I learned something today about this ayah myself, so I wanted to share it with you. So, not only does the Qur'an negate... Not only does the Qur'an negate uh, that Allah has a son or a daughter or that Allah himself is a son or a daughter or that Allah has, has any partner with that's a wife or a husband. But Allah says, right, like, it, it, you know, the Arabs, Ibn Kathir, he goes on to mention a lot of things. One of the things he mentions is that, you know, one of the, one of the, most, one of the most effective ways of negating something is to... Um, Suppose its possibility and then refute it too. Right? To suppose its possibility and then to show how that it wouldn't work. That even though, even if I, even if I supposed its, its, its truthfulness, then, uh, you know, even if I suppose that it could, it could happen, uh, this is how it doesn't work. Right? So, like we say in English, right? We say, and if it were true, then, and then you, so when you're refuting an argument, right, and you say, you know, it's wrong because of A, B, and C, and D, and E, and F, and G, and you list all these re- refutations of an argument, the last thing you mentioned, like a nail on the confidence, is you, you begin with a refutation of the argument by saying, and even if it were true, then, then you mention your, your refutation. Right? So here Rasulullah sallallahu is being told to say, Say, O Muhammad, uh, Say, O Muhammad, if there was for the most merciful a son or a offspring, then I would have been the first to worship him or her. Right? Now, what's the refutation? Where's the refutation in this argument? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course, didn't worship. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't worship anyone or anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So, so there's a refutation. The fact that he didn't do it, if it were true, he would be doing it. 
that's the that's the refutation and argument that the the one who Allah speaks with and reveals revelation to and guides him and he says about him he does not speak from his own desires it is only revelation that he speaks this man Ali salam if there were an offspring that the most merciful had he would have been the first to worship him he would have been the first to worship them but of course we don't find Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam doing so so therefore that is that is ta'kid it is uh, drilling the point and emphasizing the point that Allah jalla wa'ala does not have offspring period full stop طيب ولا شريك له and there is no there is no partner that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has right this is uh, clear uh, from what we discussed just right now and uh, something that every Muslim knows that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, no partners Allah is لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له there is no, nothing worthy of worship in truth except him him alone وحده لا شريك له right With, and there's no partners unto him Right, Subhanahu uh, wa Taala, right? And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions in the Quran that if there were in the heavens, uh, right, ilahini uh, ithnain, two gods, right, then one of them would have done something different than the other, right? And they would, they, they, their what each one wanted would. Uh, Would uh, inter would go against the other one, right? And uh, the heavens and the earth, the fazadata, the fazadata, the entire heavens and the earth would become polluted and corrupted and destroyed, right? If there's two separate deities, right, more than one god in the heavens and the earth, what happens? What happens when one god wants to go left and the other god wants to go? Right, right. It creates a philosophical uh, fallacy and an imp impossibility. Right? What upon what merit would one god's decree supersede the other god's other other god's decree? Like it's impossible for that for for there to be any answer to that question. So. It's a logical impossibility, fallacy. It makes no, it makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Himself refutes this in the Quran by saying, "It would cause the entire heavens and the earth to be polluted. Nothing would be right in the entire cosmos, right? Because the different iradat, the different." Uh, wills of these of these deities would be constantly uh, uh, in uh, combat with one another. Okay? So what, the only thing that makes sense is monotheism, true Islamic monotheism, where we believe in one God, we, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is one and unique, indivisible, and Uh, he has no partner. He has no need of anything. He is self-sufficient. The Ghani Yun Hamid, Samad, right? The one who has no need for anything, and all of creation has need of him. Uh, he has no father, no mother. He has no son, no daughter, no brothers, no sisters, no husband or wife. Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is self-sufficient. Ghani Yun. عن العالمين like Allah says in the Quran right not in need of uh, all of creation okay يَا أَيُّهُ النَّاسِ أَنْتَمُ الْفُقَرَاءُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ الْغَنِيُّ وَاللَّهُ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ O mankind you are the fuqara the, the ones who are in destitute poverty completely impoverished and in need of 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu al-ghani wa al-hamid. And Allah is the, the most self-sufficient, free of any need, and the most praised. We'll take one more point and then we'll, 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 we'll suffice. Imam Ibn Abi Zayd al-Qayrawani rahimahullah ta'ala, he goes, he goes on to say, لَيْسَ لِأَوَّلِيَّتِهِ ابْتِدَاء Sorry. لَيْسَ لِأَوَّلِيَّتِهِ ابتداء وَلَا لِآخِرِيَّتِهِ إِنْقِطَاء لَا يَبْلِغُ كُنْهَا صِفَتِهِ الْوَاصِفُونَ وَلَا يُحِيطُ بِأَمْرِهِ الْمُتَفَكِّرُونَ Let's focus on this sentence here. لَيْسَ لِأَوَّلِيَّتِهِ ابْتِدَاء وَلَا لِآخِرِيَّتِهِ إِنْقِطَاء there is no beginning to his his uh, uh, right? To him being the first, him being the first, to him being the first, there is no beginning. And to his being the last, there is no end. Hmm. This is a Beautiful sentence, right? Uh, Allah is the first without beginning. And there is no end or uh, perishing to Him being the last. And this is a, a beautiful way of uh, describing Allah subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala beautiful way of describing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah when Allah says he is the first that doesn't mean that uh, you know uh, that there was a beginning and this is very important to understand uh, conceptually of course because we can never fully understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, and khudha qa'ida Take this as a principle, barakallahu feekum. Uh, the beautiful, beautiful answer, beautiful answer of uh, Amirul Mu'mineen, uh, Khalifa to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-awwal, uh, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa ardahu, the great, uh, you know, uh, Khalifa of the Prophet alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa and the best of creation after uh, our beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam by the consensus of the muslims abu bakr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he was asked kayfa nudriku rabbana how can we comprehend our lord and he said the following sentence awqama qala radiyallahu anhu he said Ajzuka uh, an idrakihil idraku. Your, your, your incapability. Your incapability of comprehending Him, Subhanahu wa Taala, is your comprehension. Is your comprehension of Him, Subhanahu wa Taala. So, in essence, what must be understood from the get-go and from the onset is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, in Essence, in essence, you know, is incomprehensible, and he's only comprehensible so far as he reveals himself to us through his prophets and his messengers, and the books that are, that he reveals. Subhanahu wa taala. Okay, um, this is very important to understand. This kind of underlines one of the main differences between Ahlul Sunnah. And the different other groups that split away from uh, traditional Islam is that we relinquish our understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala back unto Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Um, of course, our the intellect has a certain uh, grasp that Allah has created ability within, its, within it to... Uh, uh, understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Of course Right <laughs> Right uh, But 
Yeah, the intellect is not sufficient. The intellect is not sufficient. It needs something. And what it needs is revelation, not the other way around. Revelation doesn't need the intellect. The intellect requires revelation to to truly know God, to truly know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need revelation. You need revelation. Okay? Or you're forever in uh, laniyat, in speculation. In speculation. Now, we don't want to get into, uh, like, uh, at least in this class, we can't get into um, the debate of how far does human rationale go and what is the status of human rationale or in in intellect uh, in Islam. And there's a whole discussion to have there. And it's not unimportant. It's extremely important. Uh, however, the intellect is subservient to uh, uh, subservient to revelation. Okay, and that's the principle of Ahl Sunnah wa Jamaa. The, the the intellect, human intellect, is and forever will be subservient and secondary to revelation. And uh, you could even say complementary to revelation, maybe even. And never the other way around. Never the other way around. Okay? So, keeping that in mind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the first without any beginning. And He's the last without any end. Meaning, questions such as who created God and nonsensical, illogical questions like that don't apply to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't apply to Allah Jalla wa'ala because Allah, first of all, is uh, not a temporal being. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not exist, uh, is not bound, I should say, by time and place. You can choose to do actions at any given time or place, but He is not bound by time or place. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah created time, He created place, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not bound by these things. Okay? So, um, and it's very, you have to be very careful in the, when we, in the way that we use language. Okay? We have to be very careful in the way that we use language, lest we say something about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He did not say about Himself. Okay? In uh, our zeal to try to logically uh, categorize everything. It's a very human trait. Right? It's one of the tests, right? Is it's a human? We compartmentalize things. That's the human nature. We want to put everything in a in a box, so that we can conceptualize it and put, get rid of it and move on to the next thing. Or if if you can't do that with something, it it continuously bothers us, right? To, you know, uh, something um, understood and uh, it's understood about um, how the mind works of the human being, right? But in any case, of course, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can never do that. So the only way we can approach Allah is through His uh, His revelation and the prophets and messengers that He chooses in the books that He sends to us through them. In any case, keeping all of them in mind, like I said, keep, try to, try to, you know, look how amazing this sentence is. Allah is the first without any beginning and He is the last without any end. Allahu Akbar. Right? So there is no beginning to Allah SWT. Allah has always been. Like one of the Sahaba, they asked the, the, the Prophet وسلم, an authentic hadith. He said, Aina kana rabbuna qabla an yakhluq as-samawati wal-ard or qabla khalq as-samawati wal-ard. Right? Where was our Lord Right, one of the Sahaba asked the Prophet وسلم, where was our Lord before he created the heavens and the earth? This hadith, even before we get to the the Nasr hadith, to the to actual text of what the Prophet وسلم, said, is a refutation against uh, the Asha'ira and the Maturidiyya and the different groups uh, and sects that uh, broke away from traditional Islam. Uh, and their objection to this question of asking where, 
about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it was such a vehemently disgusting, wrong, abhorrent uh, question to ask, why didn't Rasulullah rebuke the Sahabi or the other Sahaba that uh, asked this question or answered this question? To take it a step further, Rasulullah himself asked this question in the hadith of Jariyah in the hadith regarding the slave girl who was struck in the face by one of the Sahaba. And it's a long hadith. We don't have to get into now. We probably we are going to get into it a little later on. So I want to keep it for then. But the Prophet asked that woman, anha, he said, Ain Allah. Where is Allah? If the Prophet وسلم, himself uh, asked this question, how, how can you say that it's abhorrent, that it's evil, that it's ugly, that it's in, in, impermissible to ask? We have Rasulullah on more than one occasion asking this question. And then we have Sahaba asking this question. Yet we have people who came hundreds of years later, hundreds of years later, saying that this question is not allowed to be asked. Ilayish, why? Barakallahu feekum. In any case, uh, what was the answer of the Prophet ﷺ when the Sahabi asked him, "Aina kana Rabbuna qabla an yakhluq al-samawati wal-ard, where was our Lord before He created the heavens and the earth?" The question, the answer of Allah of Allah's Messenger ﷺ was, "Kana Allah, wa lam yakun shay, wa lam yakun shayun qablahu." There was Allah, and there was nothing before Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. كَانَ اللَّهُ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْءٌ قَبْلَهُ And there was Allah and there was nothing before Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's so much we can say about this and go into. But unfortunately, uh, uh, our time will not allow it. Inshallah, maybe uh, at a later time, perhaps somewhere later on in this explanation of this treaty, if Allah gives us tawfiq to finish it Alright guys, so we'll suffice With uh, this much for today And inshallah ta'ala We will continue um, uh, Inshallah uh, Not tomorrow, but on Monday uh, After Fajr uh, I'm teaching today since Because I, I didn't teach yesterday So, um, but typically We're going to go from Monday uh, Monday to Friday ta'ala, And Saturday, Sundays we'll take off uh, you know, it's Ramadan, so I'll give you guys a little bit of a break uh, and uh, uh, to, you know, spend some time with the family and uh, and all that good stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Barakallah fikum. If you have any questions like, uh, before, please leave them in the comment section. Uh, Barakallah fikum. Jazakum Allah khairan. Uh, may Allah bless and preserve you all. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Ashhadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته